Welcome to another video. Let's find the domain of these two functions that look almost the same. Let's get into the video. The first problem, that's example number one, appears to be very easy because you understand that the sine function does not have a problem with any input. Whatever you give to sine, it will take. That is, the domain of the sine function is from negative infinity to infinity. So, you just want to make sure that whatever is here is real. As long as it's on the number line, it would fit. So the only problem we might have with this input, remember the domain of the sine function is from negative infinity to infinity. So whatever you have here just has to be on the number line. So under what condition will this expression not be on the number line? It is if it is not defined or not real. And the only way this will not be real is if you are dividing x squared by a zero. Okay, so the only problem we'll have is this denominator. So this has to be between negative infinity and infinity, right? So that is x squared over x plus 2 must be defined. Once it is defined, it is on the number line. That's the meaning. Okay, so is this defined everywhere? No, it is not defined when you get a zero in the denominator. So we say, therefore, x is not equal to negative 2. So we can clearly say that domain of f of x equals sine of x squared over x plus 2 is the set of all real numbers except negative 2. This is how I'm going to write it. It is a set of all real numbers except negative 2. Or you can write the, the longer version of it, which is negative infinity to negative 2 union negative 2 to infinity. Okay, so these are the two ways you could, not two ways, there are many other ways, or you can say it is a set of x such that x is not equal to negative 2. Okay, so these are ways you can write the domain of this function, the set of x such that x is not negative 2, or you write it this or that way. Okay, by the way, the focus is going to be on the second one because the second one is a little tricky. Remember, for sine, we said that any value you plug in on the number line would work. But in this case, it is not just any value. So we have to restrict whatever we're doing because you can just plug in anything into the arc sine function. For this second part, we have to ask ourselves, what is it that we can plug into this function? Remember the domain of inverse sine or arc sine is from negative 1 to positive 1. So, if you want to figure out what numbers you have to exclude or what values of x must be excluded from the domain of this function, you have to restrict yourself to negative 1 and 1. Okay, so we say since the domain since the domain of inverse sine of x, I know some people don't like inverse sine, they like arc sine of x is from negative 1 to 1, okay? It means whatever is here has to be negative 1 or greater than negative 1 or less than 1 or equal to 1. So it has to be strictly between negative 1 and 1. Then we have x squared over x plus 2 
or let me just write it this way. Negative 1 is less than what we have, or this is less than or equal to 1. So this is what the domain tells us we have to do. So now you need to solve this. That's it. You just need to solve this. And this presents us with a problem, because the problem is you have to solve two different inequalities. Ah, okay, let's start. Let's take the left-hand side and see what numbers we need to exclude. I'm going to write it as negative 1 is less than or equal to x squared over x plus 2. What does that mean for us? Um, we can, this implies that if I move this in, I'm going to have x squared over x plus 2 plus 1 is greater than 0. That's what this means. Or you say 0, if you move this in here, this becomes 0 is less than or equal to, or you say this is greater than or equal to 0. So now, we are looking for a situation where this is going to be greater than or equal to 0. That is, it is at least 0, this expression. Now, it's hard to do this. You have to, let's find the critical numbers first, because that's what you need to do. So, let's make this into a single um, rational expression by giving this a common denominator, we'll end up with x squared plus x plus 2 over x plus 2 is greater than or equal to 0. That's what this is going to become. So what do you need here? You just need critical values. The critical values of this rational expression are whatever values will make the denominator equal to 0 or make the numerator equal to 0. Just look for those. Well, this will be 0 when x is negative 2, right? This can never be 0 because b squared is less than 4ac. I always just use that, okay? You notice that this can never be 0. There's no real number. No, there's no real value of x for which the top is going to be 0. So the only critical number you, you have is negative 2. So we have only critical number critical number is negative 2. So we just need to test that this function cannot be around negative 2 so we can exclude some things from it. So let's do our critical, our number, um, our sign chart, and sign chart. So we have negative 2, that's the only critical number. And then we have this expression on top and this one under. Remember, we need this expression to be positive, okay? Or at least be zero. We know it's going to be zero. You know, it's not even going to be zero here. It's going to be undefined here. So here, what do we have? We have to exclude negative two. So this is not even a part of it. Let's put a, a hole on top. Okay, so here we're going to have x squared plus x plus two. And then we have x plus 2. Let's pick a big number, a giant number, less than negative 2. If we pick a number less than negative 2, what's it, what is it going to be? This is going to be like negative 10, for example. So this is going to be 100 minus 10 plus 12. That's a positive. Let's pick negative 10 here. This is going to be a negative. Negative times positive, or positive divided by negative is negative. So this side is negative. But what we want is greater than zero. So we cannot accept anything less than negative two. Let's go to the right hand side. Let's pick a value greater than negative two. Let's pick zero. If we take zero here, put zero here. Zero plus zero plus two, that's a positive value. Zero plus two is a positive value. So this is positive. So it looks like we can accept values of x just after negative two. That's what we get from here. So we're going to accept this region. But we're done. That's all it tells us. But it does not really tell us all that we need. Okay? Values of x, that's not, that's not what we want. Okay? So now let's go here and go deal with the second inequality. Now this one is going to be faster because now we're focused on this one. So we have x squared over x plus 2 um, minus 1 is less than or equal to 0. 
So I moved this in here. Okay, we do the same thing. Let's get an equation together. We have x squared minus x minus 2 is less than or equal to 0. Oh, over, sorry, x plus 2. So what are the critical numbers? If it's the same thing here, we have x equals negative 2 is critical. Okay, well, and what values of x will make the top? equal to zero. Well, if you solve this quadratic, you're going to get x equals negative one and x equals two. So we have negative one, we have negative two, we have negative two, we have negative one, and we have two. Okay, so those are the three critical numbers. So let me just write them here. Critical numbers are negative two, negative one, and two. So you solve the top, you get negative 1 and 2, you solve the bottom for 0, and you get negative 2. So here's our sign chart. Negative 2, negative 1, and this is um, 2. So what do we have on top? Well, what you have on top here, we can, we can write it in the factored form. Because the factored form is of this is going to be x plus 1, x minus 2, over x plus 2. That's what we have here, less than or equal to 0. I need us to write this because here now, what I'm going to have is a combination of x plus 1, I have x minus 2, and I have x plus 2. Okay? Ha! Let's pick a value. Well, we already said we can't take anything from here, so there's no point dealing with anything on this side if we're going to get values of x. We're not going to take anything from here because this already has eliminated that area. But you can do it. You find out that we don't need it. Remember, our mission is to get values that are less than 0. So here, let's go. If we pick a value between negative 2 and negative 1, what do we get? Between negative 2 and negative 1, let's pick negative 1 half. Negative 1 half plus 1 is going to be negative half. So this part is negative. So we got a negative here. Negative 1 half minus 2 is negative. Oh, negative 1 half, this is positive. So note, when you interact, when there's interaction between two negatives and a positive, you're going to get a positive because it's minus times minus divided by plus. That gives you a plus. So this is plus. This plus does not satisfy the condition because plus means it's greater than zero, but we want it to be negative. Okay? So by the way, we're going to include the point minus one because this is less than or equal to. It's not like the case of negative two where it is undefined. Remember, this gives us undefined. That's why we're leaving it out. So let's go here. So we cannot accept this region. Let's go here. If we pick a number between negative one and two, zero is a good number. Put zero here. This is going to be positive. Put 0 here, this is going to be negative. Put 0 here, this is going to be positive. So the interaction of two positives and a negative is going to be negative. So this is negative. That looks like a good candidate between negative 1 and 2. Let's test values greater than 2. Let's pick 10. Okay? If I pick a big value greater than 2, 10 plus 1 is positive. 10 minus 2 is positive. Oh, everything is positive. So you see, the only region that satisfies the condition, that satisfies the condition we're looking for, is between negative 1 and 2. And both of these numbers are included because of what we have here. When we solve this, it was less than or equal to. So we can clearly say this region is what we want, and the domain of the function we're dealing with is all values from negative 1, including negative 1, to 2. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.